that you guys got up 25 early we're rolling they kind of chip back away and how just how did you navigate through that game and how did you see it develop and i guess what was the key to closing it out and making sure that you kept them down um i mean you have their veteran team uh obviously uh you know they've been struggling a little bit but uh a team like that just doesn't lie down uh a lot of winners on a team uh obviously champions on a team guys who've uh who've uh, been places that uh, we as a team are, you know, are trying to go. So, uh, you know, you don't expect a team like that to lay down. They made adjustments. Uh, we adjusted, uh, fortunate to get a win. Ant was just saying how big of a key that playing with swag is for your team and how much you've instilled that in them. What have you tried to do in that respect to get these guys to play with that energy and that confidence? I mean, obviously, you know, being on the other side, coming into Minnesota, uh, swagless team over the years, you know, not really understanding identity. Uh, but this year is very different. We, we know exactly who we are. Uh, we're not backing down from anybody. Um, humbly though, very humbly, not, uh, not, uh, arrogant in that sense, uh, very comfortable in our skin. We're not, you know, we're not, you know, running away from any type of smoke or ducking any type of action. We, uh, you know, we want to, you know, show the league that uh, this is a team that's, you know, going to be talked about for the next couple of years for sure. Is that, do you think that's important to send that message that this is a new day? This is a different squad. Yeah. It's funny. Cause you know, you know, when Memphis does it, everyone prays about it. You know, when we do it, you know, we're uh, categorized as a team with a uh, very little character, but uh, it's okay. We're going to continue to prove all the doubters wrong and continue to build something special here. With, uh, you know, with, with Finchie and, Cat, D-Lo, myself, you know, continue to build something, something special here. So uh, that's our mindset. Do you take any exception to Russ saying, like, that not no no Timberwolves have accomplished anything, and so I don't pay attention to anything they tell me? Uh, I mean, that's, you know, that's his perspective. I mean, Russ is a is a great player, a, a phenomenal player in this league. I mean, he's, you know, our individual battles, you know, all the way from OKC, uh, you know, <laughs> He's one of those players where I make sure I get my, you know, I get my sleep in the next night. You know, uh, if I'm in L.A., I make sure I don't go out because, you know, I got rust the next day. So, uh, you know, I go to bed early, you know, waiting for that matchup. So, uh, I mean, you know, from his standpoint, you know, it's it, it's his opinion, of course. But um, uh, like I said, we're trying to go to places that, you know, Russ has been. He's been to the finals. Bronze won championships. So we're trying to get to places like that. So. Uh, uh, it's fitting. It seems like like you'll get in people's faces and stuff, and like obviously they're super competitive, but then you always like finish it with like a butt tap and a smile. Like, what is that line to walk of like, yep, you're gonna be super competitive, but try to like, I don't know, always just seem like, hey, it's a game out here. Hey, uh, it's just a game. At the end of the day, it's a basketball game, and you know what we started playing basketball for is the fun of it, the competitiveness of it, uh, and you don't want to take that away, nor do you want to like dumb it down with just being like overly aggressive cocky you know it's a it's a fine line you, you you know you can flirt with in a game and I think that's part of the game that's been lost you know and and these fans here in Minnesota they appreciate that um just go out there and being competitive having fun you know leaving the game win or lose yeah look at yourself in the mirror did I have fun today and and for the most part since I've been here we've been having a lot of fun and that's what it's all about uh, you're talking about having a, a vision going forward for the rest of the season. You've talked about that since since training camp, about how you've had high aspirations for the, that this group. How how has where you are at right now um, lined up to what your expectations were of this team coming into the season? A lot of work still. We have a lot of work still. Uh, you know, we're not in the playoffs. We're in the play-in right currently. So uh, I don't want to bite my words on making the playoffs, but uh, – you know, my, my goal is to make the playoffs, not to play in. So we, we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work. Finch was talking about how you and Carl have a, a really good chemistry yeah. on the pick and roll. How has that developed throughout the course of the season with with you two in, in that in that sequence? Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> very little me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, my, he, put, he put so much pressure on the defense. Obviously, he's, you know, one of the best shooting bigs, the best shooting big in the NBA right now. I mean, he, he really is, you know, <laughs> three point champ. Uh, so it's just all about reads. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, 
uh, normal centers in this game, you know, and when a guard attacks the paint, their their body is sensed to, to drift right into the paint. And, you know, you could kick it to Cat, top of the key. You know, he's not like a corner three type of three-point specialist. He's like top of the key. So it, it puts that much more pressure on the, on the defense, especially Biggs, who's guarding him. So that's all about reads. I mean, I mean, Cat makes my job extremely easy. I'll say that. <laughs> Pat, it seems like you've kind of mastered the – theater of the crowd if you will does anybody ignite a crowd better than you these days i mean i couldn't hear i mean i i, I can't hear shit I've, I've been like deaf half my ear for the last last i don't know week so i've been playing in ear drums and, and you know i can't hear the coach when he talk i can't hear the plays guys telling me shit on defense like i can't hear anything so i you know unfortunately i, I didn't really even hear how how loud the crowd was but i could i could just imagine you know i could just imagine so uh you know i just yeah, you know, it's just been pretty tough. But, you know, the crowd's been great all year. We've been giving them something to come out for. And now uh, we just want to keep it going. Is your hearing going to be all right? I don't know. I see a doctor. I see a specialist tomorrow. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Pat, there's no doubt that you bring a very valuable energy to the game and to the team. Um, what motivates you to be like that every single game and have that, like, great mentality that you bring? Because I notice, you know, some players, you know, throughout the league, you know, it's, it could be hit or miss some some games. But for you, it's like every game. Like, what is there a certain like ritual that you do or anything that just makes you ready to play hard? No, I just, you know, I've, I, I know, I, you know, they say playing hard is a, is a skill nowadays. You know, um, I mean, I, you know, I built my house, in, you know, in this league, you know, from from that skill of playing hard. Um, I go out there. I don't want to. First, I don't want to shame my mom. She's the first one to curse me out. You know, if I go out there and play, you know, not, you know, not about scoring, not about, you know, assists or stats, but just playing hard. And secondly, I don't want to let my teammates down. Um, I mean, that's, it's just that easy. You know, I just don't want to let my mom and my teammates down. So I go out there with a chip on my shoulder. Um, it's always a little extra, you know, because, you know, Lakers drafted me. So it's always a little extra there. But, uh, I, you know, play with the same chip I played with since I entered the NBA. Pat, in the third quarter, Cat looked a little frustrated on the, on the bench, and you looked at him and you said, "Go be great." There's no, I can't. Yeah. Now, what is what is the importance for you of staying in Carl's ear, maybe when he's down, um, or maybe he's in foul trouble, or whatever the case may be, to just go out there and, and dominate? He's he's a very very special player. Uh, to 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 be a big like that, he, he plays with so emotion like so much emotion, like so much passion, like for the game. And you really don't see that a lot, you know, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, the passion he plays with, you know, whether it's a good call, whether he, you know, he's getting the right calls or, you know, whether he's not getting the right calls, you know, my, my, my job is, you know, to continue to preach to him how dominant he's supposed to be every night. And, you know, he's, he's not one of those guys that fights back, you know, you tell him something once and he just says, okay, I'm going to be dominant and literally goes out there and does it. So, uh, you know, my, I thought my biggest task when I came here was going to be cat. And um, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's not me. You know, it's, it's been great, man. You know, of course you hear all the stories about different players before you, you know, before you meet them and uh, you know, guys, they tell me this, they tell me that about cat and, and to see him, my person was totally opposite of everything that I've heard. So, uh, you know, he's the, he's the engine of this, of this, of this, of this team. And, you know, we can only go as far as you can take us, you know? So uh, it's my job to, you know, it's never not, never about this game. It's all about the, you know, the ending, you know? So I get it finished product of, you know, you know, him, you know, not complaining a little bit with the refs or him, you know, getting down on himself or him in foul trouble. You know, if I, if I can kind of limit, eliminate all that and just hit, have him play the purest basketball he can play, you know, I think that we'd be a greater team, you know? So that's my job. Pat, are you as excited as the fans in Minnesota? Uh, tickets are going up. Fans are coming back to the Target Center again after all that time. Are you as excited as them? Yeah, always. I mean, I mean, he's, from my first game I got here into the game now is very different. Uh, you know, he's you got you know D'Lo challenged fans are <laughs> throughout the seasons to get here. I mean, they're here. They're here early. I mean, I remember you know snow snowstorms on a Monday and it was sold out. It was 51 degrees today, sold out. Um, you know, he's it's the Midwest, man. He, these are some real fans. You know, they love basketball. They know the game. And, uh, you know, we just want to come out here and be competitive because we're going to need them, you know, throughout the playoff run for sure. It's hard. It's hard to win here. It's very hard to win here. And we want to 
continue to make it that way.